Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, welcome to my studio. Today we're going to have a go at painting some uh, sweet peas, something along these lines, something pretty and pink and floral. And um, this is, um, I might do this twice. We'll see how this goes first time. I've got a piece of kind of hot press paper here. I'm not quite sure what kind of paper it is, but it's a hot press or um, a very, very fine cold press. So it has a much smoother surface than a lot of the rougher papers. papers and I thought that would probably be better for this painting. Um, and I'm just going to use three colors, really, um, a pink, a blue, and a green. So something like sap green, this one here would do. Um, and I might use my gallo colors, in which case for the sap green, I can use olive green or um, forest green, something like that. Uh, I'm not sure yet. Um, and if you have a regular set of paints, um, probably what you want to do is choose either cobalt blue or ultramarine, um, opera rose or permanent rose, or and you can use a violet like dioxazine mauve or quinacridone violet. Those are the colours I've got out here. And if you have the gallo set or something like this, then you could use um, quinacridone violet, which is this colour here, um, and um, quinacridone magenta, which is a pink. It comes out quite pale, although it looks quite dark on the set here. Um, and um, yin min blue or periwinkle would probably be best for the blues. So um, that's what I'm probably going to be using. And I'm going to just um, try and do these really simply um, and just put very um, light strokes on to start with and we'll see how it goes. So a sort of something like that and then uh, change the colour and then the next one We'll try to change the colour. The next one will make it a little bit more blue. I don't think I'll use periwinkle. I think that seems to me to be a little bit too opaque. So I'm going to switch to cobalt blue. And um, that's quite a nice um, colour. And I think I'm sort of going to try and make them overlap a little bit. This is a very, very, this could be a very, very quick painting. Um, it depends how much time you want to spend on each individual flower, I suppose. But I, I, I thought probably I would do one layer and then come in and do another layer of petals on top. Sorry about the rattling there. I think my throat's really dry today. I probably ought to get myself something to drink. But yesterday <coughs> I had too much coffee in the morning and I felt a bit weird. So I'm trying to avoid that. And um, honestly, if it's not one thing, it's another, isn't it? Um, but, uh, this pink, opera pink, is really intense. But I think if you mix it with other things, it might might be okay. Um, 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 um. Pink. Mm. What did I say? Quinacridone magenta. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. That colour there. Yes. Okay, well, I think that's enough flowers. And now I'm going to do the stems. And uh, the, thing, the thing that's characteristic about, uh, what do you call them? 
sweet peas is that they have these pea tendrils which curl like that. So this is where you can do your kind of um, uh, neurographic art lines or whatever. Let it touch the flowers. Let the green flow into the bottom of the flowers. This is the second time I've done this this morning. The first time I turned on the video and I didn't turn on the video. So I was talking to myself for half an hour. It's always good when you do that. Quite nice when the lines are wonky because of course in nature they are. Oops, oh no, I've just put violet paint all over my cardigan and the painting. Oh well, I can tell it's going to be one of those days guys. And then maybe we'll put some leaves on. I'm not going to fill the leaves in because I think that it might be a little bit better if we just have them loose. I'm going to have to go and wash myself after this. I've got paint all over me. Go away. And then I'm going to come in with some, some of the same colours but a bit darker and just drop it into the bottom of the flowers. And then where it's beginning to dry, we can put in the front petal. And then probably might be worth letting this dry at this particular moment in time. Um, just adjust the, the floral balance here a little bit. Okay, I'm going to let that dry, come back and finish it off, and in the meantime, try and get this paint off of my cardigan. 
Okay, so that one's drying, and while that one's drying, I'm going to do another one. This time, this palette's quite annoying, actually, the way that does that. I don't like that. Let's find something else. While that's drying, I'm going to paint, um, do the whole thing again, this time on um, Archie's paper, and we'll see what the difference is. So this is um, 100 percent cotton as opposed to I don't know what, but I suspect that other one was not cotton. It's a different painting experience, that's for sure. You feel as if um, uh, you feel as if you've got a lot more control, or as if you want to fiddle more because you can. And the paint doesn't go onto the paper as easily. as it did onto the smooth, the smoother, somewhat hot press paper. And the edges are much sharper, seems to me. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking I want to go in and, yeah. Seems to me that Archie's paper is for experts who know what they're doing. Which clearly I don't. Totally different, the, the paper seems to demand a completely different approach. That's strange. I've never really noticed that before. You know, and we all say, oh, Arches is the best, but it's much more difficult, if you ask me. I think, but anyway, don't listen to me. I don't know what I'm talking about. I think I think it's a, mu a much more um, demanding paper.
Let's we'll put a bud down here. I don't really know what a bud looks like. We don't have any of these. In the garden. Should do, just never get around to planting them. I think they'd probably grow quite well here. I suppose the thing is with this paper, you can develop a painting a lot more. That's the thing, I think. And for something spontaneous and quick, you don't need this paper. But if you want to develop the painting a bit more, then obviously that's a different process and Clearly this is better for that. And again, we're getting to the point now where I'm going to have to let it dry. I don't know if you can hear that noise in the background. That's my dog snoring. Anyone I think she'd had a hard night. Just dropping in a bit more colour at the bottoms to let it blend in. And I'm going to leave that now to uh, to dry naturally. I'm not going to uh, put the hairdryer on that because it needs to move. And then we'll come in and put a little bit more detail on top. And meanwhile, this one has been drying. And completely different effect. This is the kind of painting that makes me think I need to come in with some ink and uh, sort of make it into more of a contemporary kind of thing. So let me dry this off with the hairdryer and then perhaps we'll do that. So I've dried this off now and um, I'm going to come in now with a pen. I've got a Stettler pigment liner. This is a point one. And um, just going to give these ones, this is a nice smooth paper, so it should take the ink quite nicely. And we're just going to give these um, flowers a bit more shape, make them into something that looks a bit more like uh, sweet pea. So it's, it's going to be a, a kind of simplified version though. So don't expect any kind of, um, what would you call it, uh, botanical accuracy. So we'll just squiggle in some lines on top of the color there for the petals, which are very light. And so they don't need very much in the way of um, uh, shadows and things like that. So we'll just kind of indicate um, roughly the, the sepals at the bottom there and then just following, if there's a kind of guideline of the paint underneath, you can use that to indicate where the petals are going to go, like that one there. And then there's another petal there and then here. So you can have fun with this. Again, think of it as something like a kind of neurographic um, exercise, perhaps, where you're drawing the petals and overlapping and this kind of thing. Just going to carry on until it's done, really.
Yeah, go over the, the painted leaves and tendrils that I've drawn as well, just to sharpen them up. Maybe not all of them, but, and they don't have to join and they don't have to be perfect. What flower ever was perfect? And maybe only the flower in the, in the Little Prince. Have you read that book, The Little Prince? That's an interesting story that is. The uh, water has carried the pigment into lovely shapes, which in some of these has really kind of mimicked the actual flower really rather well, like here. So there we are, pretty much there on this one. You might want to put some lines on the leaves a little bit, perhaps for some shadow um, on some of them. So some of them will have a little bit of paint behind and some of them won't. Some of them will just be like that. So you can put some shadowy lines on there. And then if you want to, you can also emphasize the shape, the curved shape by coming into the bottom of the flowers and just putting in some uh, I suppose it's indicating the veins or maybe it's just indicating the shadow Take our time over this. I was watching um, some videos last night by a woman, or well, it was by a woman called Kate, who lives in England, in North England, in Northumberland, on a farm, and uh, her YouTube channel is called The Last Homely House, taken from... Um, Lord of the Rings, I think. Well, yes, it was, she said so. And uh, she does all the things I do. She spins and she knits and she, uh, I don't know if she crochets, I don't think she crochets. And I don't think she paints, but she does a lot of crafting and she does um, things in the garden as well. I don't do much in the garden, but I do have a little collection of um, succulents in the house now. Well, not in the house, in the studio. You could continue on with this at some length if you wanted to. I think that's looking reasonable. Just doubling up on some of the stems there a little bit. And uh, and there's a leaf up here looking a little bit sad. Maybe we want just a couple more leaves. I think this looks quite pretty, don't you? So that's that one. And um, not too bad. And then by comparison, on the arches paper, we have something also quite pretty, but it's absolutely different. 
Um, no real lines to indicate the petals. So personally, I think I, for a quick result, I think arches is probably not the way to go. This paper, which is a hot press, and I'm going to see if I can find a good source of hot press paper that I can recommend. Now, I wouldn't dream of using ink on here, um, but it's going to need some work. It really, it really is going to need some work putting in the petal shapes. And much more difficult process than the other painting. So I'm not going to carry on with this one on camera. I shall probably leave this with you and um, I'll probably post this on um, the members uh, Facebook page when it's done, if it ever gets done, or I might um, finish it and put it up on Patreon. So uh, yeah, I'm going to let you go now. This is the painting of today. Nice uh, graphic sweet pea painting, a bit late for the flower of the month, the birthday flower of May, but um, there we are. If you like this, give me a like and subscribe and turn on notifications if you wouldn't mind. But most of all, please just leave a comment below so that I can um, respond to you and um, enjoy reading the things that you want to tell me or ask me. If you have any questions, please put them there and uh, I'll see you again soon. So bye, everybody. Bye bye. Do you think maybe you should come down, Arthur?